I, I really thought that I had no talent for fiction and I wasn't really interested in journalism. So all through college, I didn't do anything about writing except papers, a senior thesis, and I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was completely lost. I attended three schools and had five majors. But along the way, I took Italian, see? So this wasn't really altogether a bad thing. Um, and then I went to work for IBM because they recruited on campus. And I really had no idea of what to do. So I was a technical writer at IBM Endicott and hated the whole corporate mentality. So I thought I'd go back to school. And I was enrolling in graduate school in anthropology when I bumped into a classmate of mine who was working at the local newspaper. And she told me there was another opening. So I went across the street and applied. And they hired me on the basis of my senior thesis. And so this was the Binghamton Evening and Sunday Press. And I was on the women's pages, you know, 1970. I think it was January 1970. And um, they let me write about anything I wanted. They didn't care. So that was the year of the first Earth Day. And I wrote about pollution and conservation. And within a week, I remember saying to myself, so this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Because I finally felt really comfortable, happy with it. And I've been doing more or less the same thing ever since. I didn't know the word science writing. Uh, it was not something anybody ever mentioned. But shortly after I wrote for the press, I moved to Ithaca. And the Cornell News Bureau had a position for a science writer. And I loved reading what that fellow wrote. And I got to meet him. And I talked to him about how interested I was. Because I'd been interested in science. And, uh, so one day he called me and said that he'd gotten a job with the National Science Foundation. He was leaving town. And I should apply for his job. 